In the studio now is former Scottish First Minister Alex Salmon. Alex, thank you so much Good for joining morning. us. Ultimately, the SNP are responsible for this, aren't they? They tried to use an opportunity, serious what's happening in Gaza, for political gain, to put some Labour MPs in a very, very difficult situation. And the Speaker thought, I want all sides to have their say. Well, I've got no brief to defend the SNP, but uh, the SNP are entitled to use one of their, I think, three supply days in the whole of the year to put forward their position in Gaza. That's not their fault. Uh, and uh, what happened uh, in the Commons, the chaos, which shows the House of Commons in a dreadful light, because people will be saying, why are they all bickering about procedure when they should be speaking clearly to save the innocence of Gaza? That's absolutely true. But I think uh, I would have to absolve the SNP from, uh, from the blame in this. Uh, I mean, this is all down to Lindsay Hoyle caving into pressure. Now, look... John pressure Ber from where, Alex? Oh, from the Labour Party, obviously. I mean, John Berko, at least predecessor, could be annoying, he could be verbose. But he had two qualities. One, he had guts, and secondly, he knew Commons procedure. Lindsay Hoyle has neither of these qualities. But well, with he, the greatest he respect, Berko was because... thrown out because he was accused of or him and his yeah. Remainer friends I, trying to out. Yeah, but I just want to be really yeah, clear. No, no, Lindsay Hoyle does know Commons procedure yeah, because he, he acknowledged that he was changing yeah. it in his speech. So uh, he made the decision against the advice of his advisers. I've known Lindsay Hoyle for years. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's a nice man. The idea he knows Commons procedure, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you can't have been looking at his performances over the years. Lindsay Hoyle, as soon as he's challenged on any point of procedure, gets all flustered, waves his arms about and tells people to leave the chamber. Why he, do you think he did what he did yesterday, then? Be well, because, <laughs> because this is all about letting people off the hook, right? The reason that Netanyahu has managed to kill 30,000 people, 20,000 women and children, uh, injure 100,000, displace 2 million, it's because the international community have let him off the hook. They've allowed him to do it. Yesterday was about letting Keir Starmer off the hook because he was in a box, he was in a position. And instead of sending him away with a flea in his ear before the debate, which is what a real speaker would have done, and said, look, if you want the Labour position debated, use your supply day next week to table your own motion. That's what he should have done. He caved into pressure and, as a result, the Commons descended into chaos. One of my favourite people, Quentin Letts, is on this show on a Wednesday, uh, writes in the Mail today on a dramatic day, Mr Speaker, spectacularly self-destructed. Um, you speak... And, and look, there are rumours, Alex, about, you know, Sue Gray, you know, the one who did Boris and is now the Chief of Staff for Starmer was seen... I, this, I, all, I, all, all I, all I, I know I, is... Like people say... It, about, I don't, I, I don't think all, all I know is what you said is true. As a democracy, we look like a laughing stock this morning. And for people, and, and you and I would share this, for people the length and breadth of this country who are on their way to work right now, the kids are screaming, they can't pay their bills, there's migrants in their village, we'll do that in Cumbria in a minute, all that sort of stuff. This, they look at these elected representatives, whether it's the speaker and his position's untenable or people walking off in a huff, Politics has never been less popular. And yeah. MPs, if they don't grasp that, I, I worry about how many people will actually turn out to vote in a bleeding general election. And that is another example of how politicians across the political sphere are losing the interest of the public, and that's dreadful for yeah, me. Yeah, well, I, I, I believe it's the government's calculation and the one hope they've got is <laughs> nobody turns up. Really? <laughs> They'll probably have it on Christmas Day, the way things are going. But, yes, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, people really care about this issue, Gaza. You know, you know, people, the united because, voice, they, wouldn't Because it? people are decent. They, they see innocence being killed and they care about it and they want people to do something But I will take it. issue with but you on one thing and support Rosie, right? I, and I know you have no reason... They're not supporting me, I'm just putting the... No, 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 but hear me no, out, hear me don't, out. Don't, don't the SNP <laughs> were playing political games because they knew absolutely that those 80 uh, Labour MPs who, were, who wanted to vote for a ceasefire would have voted with their, their amendment and then they could have gone back to Scotland and say, the Labour Party doing quite all right now in Scotland don't want a ceasefire. Yeah. I'm not blaming just the SNP, all of them are played games well, and all of them and, and have made saying, the political system look ridiculous. And I, I'm in a great position to be the umpire here, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just because you know I'm not in the yeah. SNP anymore. Yeah. But you're entitled to put down yep. your views in your motion, and if the Labour Party wanted to put down their views, whatever they are, they could have done it next week because yeah. they have many, many supply days. But look. But was the SNP motivated more about trying to trip up the Labour Party for political gain or for what was actually happening in well, Gaza? Uh, people, people do play politics, Rosie, but I, I think you'd be doing people an injustice if you thought that MPs across the parties don't care about this issue. There was something else dangerous that Lindsay Hoyle said, you know, blundered into, 
he sort of said, I was trying to stop MPs, you know, being at risk from their constituents. As soon as any democracy, any parliament says we can't do something because we're frightened of people, we're frightened of implications for our safety, then you've lost your democracy. You know, whether people get persuaded to do things by money or by fear, you undermine democracy itself. I mean, if you are so, I mean, I, I don't look, I'm not deprecating people worried about their families and things. Of course they'd be worried. But if you don't like it, if it's too hot, get out of the kitchen. That comes, I'm afraid, with the job. And being an MP is not just the comfortable life of the perks and all the rest of it. It's having the guts to do what you think is right. And if you can't do that... But Lindsay Hoyle right... did that yesterday, though, no, didn't he? He thought, in my gut, I think it's better no. that everyone be able to express a view. Right. And they could have done that last week or whenever. You don't have Keir Stammer in your office uh, half an hour before the debate. You don't have Labour MPs filibustering in the chamber to try and give the Speaker time to bend to Stammer's will. I'm not saying Lindsay Hoyle's not a nice man. What is his saying, position untenable, Alex? Well, I, I certainly would vote for no confidence in this speaker. I, Suit I, the Tories to have a Tory in the chair? No, I, I mean, I, I used it the other way around. I mean, John, yep. John Berko was a Tory. That didn't suit sure. the Tories. A good, good speakers, when they get into the chair... Need Betty back, then. Uh, lean against the previous party. Well, that, that's what a good speaker does. And I just want to give his apology, impartial. because I think it's... Yep. Obviously, he's not here, but he said, I thought I was doing the right thing and the best thing. I regret it. I apologise for how it ended up. I do take responsibility for my actions, and that's why I want to meet with the key players who've been involved. Well, Maybe this is a model of someone saying, I got it wrong, yeah. I am really sorry. Yeah. Wouldn't all our politics be better if when someone made a mistake, they said, guys, hands up, this was on me? Mm. Well, perhaps he should have met with all the key players before the debate, as opposed to just meeting with Keir Starmer. I mean, you know, look, it, I don't think, in Lindsay Hall's performance, that he can command the confidence of the House of Commons. Maybe at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter, because the House of Commons doesn't command the confidence of the people. And I think you're absolutely right, Jeremy. I, I think people in the country want to see an articulated voice mm. calling for justice for the people of Gaza, calling for peace in the, in, in the Middle East. But I don't have any time for people to say, what does it matter what the House of Commons says? No, of neither do matters. I. But the, the, the of course problem... it matters. Of... Because no, the international... no, 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 no. Absolutely, Alex. But the point is, you get respect, you earn respect. Oh, absolutely. And the House of sure. Commons, the thing that I said at half past four this morning was we can get into ramifications about options and, and data. The bottom line is the very people that put those 650-plus people into power will look at that and go, what a bunch of petulant mm. idiots who didn't come up with a voice, who humiliated us yet again, and they will lose interest. And as a person well, who believes in the democracy you're talking about, I want everybody to well, vote, but they two, won't. Two things to say to you, Jeremy. One... You were right at half past four in the morning. Thank you, mate. Secondly, you're looking pretty sprightly, <laughs> given you were up at half past I was four. up at half past two. She, she, listen, it's hard being me, Alex, but lovely to see you, pal, as ever, and thank you. Alex, and, thank and you so much for coming. My daughter's loving Scotland. Due to you, my Great friend. Great stuff. Thank you. Good man. Um,